Hi, and welcome to Wise Living Tools. Today I'm reviewing The Yamas and Niyamas by Deborah Adele. This book explores yoga's ethical practice, which is the foundation of all yogic thought. There are five yamas, which can be defined as guidelines, and five niyamas, which are defined as observances. The first yama is nonviolence, and it serves as a foundation to all the other guidelines. It's about establishing a nonviolent relationship with others and with yourself. Adele says how we treat ourselves is how we treat those around us. We must look into our own lives and become aware of the subtle ways in which we are violent with ourselves through harmful thoughts and habits. This awareness will increase our capacity to be nonviolent towards others. Practicing gratitude, trust in the moment, and thinking about others can help shift us into a state of nonviolence. The second yama is truthfulness. Truth demands integrity to our life and to our own self. Truthfulness keeps nonviolence from becoming a wimpy excuse, while nonviolence keeps truthfulness from becoming a brutal weapon. Adele says that we can begin to understand the deeper dynamics of truthfulness when we are real rather than nice, when we choose self expression over self indulgence, and when we choose growth over the need to belong. Truth has a boldness to it, and it leads us to freedom. Carl Jung once said, a lie would make no sense unless the truth was felt to be dangerous. The next yama is non stealing. Adele says this yama guides our tendencies to look outward for satisfaction. Not only do we steal from others and from the earth, we steal from our own lives as well. All self-sabotage, lack of belief in ourselves, low self-esteem, judgments, criticisms, and demands for perfection are forms of self-abuse. To practice non-stealing, we must learn to value ourselves. The fourth yama is non-excess, which is often interpreted to mean celibacy or abstinence. However, its literal meaning is walking with God which implies an awareness of sacredness in all our actions and an attentiveness to each moment, which moves us into a stance of holiness. It's about letting go of excess and living within the limits of enough. Whether we find ourselves overdoing food, work, exercise, or sleep, excess is often a result of forgetting the sacredness of life. This guideline reminds us to enter each day and each action with a sense of holiness rather than indulgence, so that our days may be lived in the wonder of sacredness rather than the misery of excess. The last yama is non-possessiveness, which liberates us from greed. It's about non-attachment, non-clinging, and non-grasping. It means being able to let go. This guideline invites us to experience full intimacy and contact with the moment, and then let go so the next thing can come. It doesn't mean that we don't care or that we somehow shut ourselves off from the pleasures and joy of life and each other. Non-attachment frees us up to be immersed in the appreciation of life and one another. We are asked to let go of the clinging to things, not the enjoyment of the thing itself. The first niyama is purity, and it refers to cleansing our bodies, minds, and actions. Adele says that there is a great energy that lies mostly dormant within each of us. This is the energy of consciousness or awakening. Cleansing strengthens the body and mind, preparing us for the awakening of that energy within. We can practice purity through simple things like exercise, drinking more water, fasting, or cleaning out our closets. Being pure with ourselves means we're not afraid of our thoughts or feelings, and we don't have to hide anything from ourselves. The second niyama is contentment, and it can only be found in acceptance and appreciation of what is in the moment. Adele writes that as long as we think satisfaction comes from an external source, we can never be content. Practicing gratitude helps to keep us centered in joy and abundance. It's also important to learn to be content with our discontentment, and that itself is a gateway to the calm depths within. Next is self-discipline, and its literal translation is heat. It's anything that impacts us to change. It carries the sense of cooking ourselves in the fire of discipline to transform ourselves. In the heat, we have two choices, to break down or break open. The fourth niyama is self-study, which is the pursuit of knowing ourselves, studying what drives us and what shapes us. It's about knowing our true identity as divine. Meditation is an important aspect of self-study. It helps us to witness our thoughts and enhances our ability to watch ourselves act and respond. The more aware we are of our emotional disturbances, the better suited we are to deal with them. The final niyama is surrender, and it reminds us that life knows what to do better than we do. It presupposes that there is a divine force at work in our lives. Surrender invites us to be active participants in our life, totally present and fluid with each moment, while appreciating the magnitude and mystery of what we are participating in. If we trust this hidden purpose, 
life will always surpass our own expectations. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and like below.